Vogue. Just the two us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. Just the two of us. Yeah, the castles in the sky. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is comfy. That's yeah. good. Well, you're very welcome to the Vogue. Thank you. Uh, yeah. let, let's go back to the beginning with you two because I mentioned World of Romance and all that sort of thing. But where, where and how did you meet? Because every time I read or hear about how you met, you have a different story. So can we get the real one, please? It was adultfinder.com. <laughs> no, it wasn't. You tell the story. Actually, you tell the story, Bob. We met. Oh, he actually said before he didn't want to tell the story. I think he's lazy about it. You can tell the engagement story then because that's even um. more boring. <laughs> We, um, we I look forward to that, so. <laughs> <laughs> you really set it up well. Yeah. We basically met in Crystal Nightclub. In but it was, it was a function, it wasn't a nightclub that night. So we okay. met in Crystal. And we just started talking for about six hours that night. And Casual yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember what we were even talking about. You know, it's like in a nightclub, most of it was like, what? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> But had you, had you spotted Vogue in the club at that time? One that of my mates actually said, I, didn't, I had never known who Vogue was because I'd been in Australia. Yeah, and one yeah. of my mates, Eddie, he goes, uh, that, that board from Hout, Vogue is here, Sturdy. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, all right. And then I saw this girl walking in. She was like a foot above everybody else, uh -huh. like six foot walk. And I was like, wow, she's, she's pretty nice. Yeah. And, and, then, did and then he didn't say hello to me, though. He walked by me after about an hour of me being there and just went, Vogue. And I was like... <laughs> I'm now, Brian was... I am a class act. <laughs> <laughs> did you... I mean, you must be getting that since you were I've been two. getting that since, yeah. About three, I've been getting that, so I was sort of like, okay. I didn't even know whether to say hi. I was like, okay. Just sort of kept walking to the toilet. Why did they call you Vogue? I always figured that out. Actually, that was my next question. Yeah. Well, it could have been big I, issue, which would have been... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my next question, but I'm going to make it my next question. Why did they call me Vogue? Well, like, my mom's quite straight-laced as well. She wasn't a hippie or anything, so I don't know. Yeah, but as Brian said, it could have been, you could have been called Big Issue, Cosmopolitan, yeah. Playboy, anything, I, Farmer's <laughs> Journal. Could have been anything at all. But they the went outside people. The, <laughs> even better. But you went to... You obviously, you, you, six hours conversation suggests you got on quite well. And mm. what, you heard you go on, the, on a date then after? Where'd you head off to? We went to the movies in the Omniflex. Good, well that's where you go. And we, uh, we went to the Hall Pass and then Brian came to my mom's house and watched Harry Potter with me. Okay. And then, yeah, it was really exciting those first two and days. And the rest, you can use your imagination. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Brian, for filling in the uh, spaces there. <laughs> uh, you had, of course, Barry, you were, you were kind of bouncing around from Dublin to Australia and uh, yep. coming and going. So how did you crack that nut in terms of Vogue and... Well, when we met Dating. first, I was going back to Australia a couple of weeks later, and Vogue was actually going over to see her brother uh, three weeks after that. And when she arrived, I just That's didn't let her go. That's not true. I don't remember. That's not true. I was doing that play, Blow Up the Lippy Bridges, and it was finishing, and the day after it finished, I went to see Brian for a holiday for three weeks, oh, and then just it. never came back. <laughs> that, oh, was, that was the story we made yeah, you up. You told your family that. I forgot yeah. you were lying okay. to someone about it. <laughs> I have no idea of what, what's happening. No, I don't know why, to see it. I'm, having a, I'm kind of getting a rough idea of what was happening. So you, did you tell your family you were going over to meet Brian? I kind of feel like we're in the principal's office and I'm like, where were you and what did you do? Yeah, that's because you're both spoofing and I want to find I'm, out who's telling the truth. I'm all, I always tell the truth. Um, I didn't want to tell my family I was just going to Australia yeah. to see a guy I just met because they would have just been, it would have been a bit weird. And your mum's a big Westlife fan, it would have made it awkward as well. <laughs> no, is she's she? not. Is your mum a big Westlife fan? No. There you go again. There you go again. Favorite. Like, take He's not allowed to talk anymore. Yeah, so, so I'll keep quiet. You, cause it all happened really quickly, though. I mean, yeah. when, when you did go to Australia, stuck around, and what, within months you were engaged. Yeah, well, we were basically living together from when I went over because um, I was too stingy to get a hotel. So I was staying with Brian for yeah. the three weeks. And um, then I decided to stay for the whole three month visa and then came home and moved back for a year. Okay, and then you got married after about, what, about 18 months or something like that? Yeah. pretty quick. Yeah, it was around that, yeah. Okay, why did you get married in Florence rather than Australia or Ireland or anywhere else? I don't know. We just, we talked about different places. I think uh, one of the main things for us was obviously we had so much uh, family in Ireland and we had so much family and friends in Australia that yeah. we wanted to have somewhere that... Because, you know, if we did it in Australia, everyone in Ireland would get annoyed with us. And if we did it in Ireland, the Australians would get annoyed. So we said, right, we'll go somewhere where everyone has to travel and mm. can get away. And Florence was... Uh, at the time, we looked at a few places, and Florence was just, just beautiful, and the place that we found was perfect. So, What do you mean by you thought, you thought everyone would get annoyed with you? Everyone, our friends, if they, uh, the Irish people had to travel all the way to Australia yeah. for the wedding, and if the Australians had to travel all the way to Ireland. So, so midway-ish. Perfect. Ish. Midway-ish. Was, was he any use at organising at the wedding, or was it just you? No, I think around? he sort of organised the band, sort of. And who was it? It wasn't Westlife, I was rang it? the band. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you rang the band, you got that sorted out. So you were going into a relationship with a man who has children, obviously, and was that going to be an issue for you, Vogue, or did you consider this long and hard, or was it all about Brian, whatever way no, he is? No, I, I don't really think I needed to consider it because I've had a stepdad since I was eight, so it just it wasn't really a big deal to me. And I'd met the girls before, and like they're at a nice age for me that we can go out and we do stuff together. We go mm. to the cinema, we go shopping, so it wasn't really a big issue for me. Yeah, okay, great. So good, I got good. lucky. That worked out. I nice. won the children lottery. Good. Well, that's a nice thing to say. And you, you. Or you would have been what 28 29 when you married was it when you got married are you talking to brian or me no you <laughs> no how old were you when you got married i, I was 26. Oh, you're 26. Really? Sorry, sorry. Oh, no, sorry i was just, just doing the sums there but you're 28 now i see but it's quite no young. i'm 27. You're 27 I'm... now <laughs> i'm 28 on wednesday and you can get me a oh, massive it's wednesday. present for that <laughs> yeah i will yeah i'll get you i'll get you a lie detector um <laughs> what? What? it's very young to be a stepmom yeah uh, so did you feel it was a difficult role to take on or did you just embrace it? You mentioned that you have a stepdad anyway, so you had been in that scenario before, so yeah. it must have been a bit... I just embraced it. I mean, I fell in love with Brian and he has two kids, so obviously I was going to take on the girls as yeah. well. So How old are they now, Brian? Yeah. 12 and 10. Okay, and how, how are they? They're very good. They're coming down to the show tomorrow to see us. They're a lucky charm. They, they came for the, the week we did Street, the week we actually won. Yeah. And then they didn't come last week and we were rubbish. Yeah. So they've promised to come back for the final tomorrow. Yeah. But do you feel it even when they're sitting in the audience? I can imagine that, that when, when you know they're there, are you conscious of their presence in the building? Absolutely. Well, I fell the night they were there. <laughs> and it was the first thing when, I, when the thud hit the ground, the first thing I could see was I could see my mum and dad and the girls sitting just looking going, their eyes just open. I was like, oh, you big idiot. You already look stupid enough dancing around the stage without your two kids seeing you falling on your bum. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you're, you're back in London now. So was, mm -hmm. I presume it was the kids were part, would have informed that decision, was it, to come yeah, back course, from Australia? Because yeah, yeah. it's a long way well, to Well, I've wanted away. to come back for a long time and I think, you know, work's obviously played a, a big part in it. And this has been the first year that I have had no commitments in Australia and was able to come back. Yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been really great being, being close to them again. Good on you. Okay. And what about about you, Vogue, we spoke briefly on the radio because you took part in a, a gay rights parade not so long yeah. ago, which you, uh, you were talking, as we spoke before, you said that you felt quite nervous speaking at yeah. an event. Was it the public speaking or was it the nature of the event or was it being in it town? It was the or? public speaking with 3,000 people and I was speaking with my sister Amber and if I caught her eye I would have just burst out laughing so it was just really nervous and it's like when you, I was never good at speaking in college or anything, I just always asked to sit down. So. Yeah. I'm grand here because I'm talking about myself and I don't have to act smart, yes. <laughs> so it was tough. But tell me about the, why did you get involved in the event, remind us what, what, what um, I have a lot of friends that are gay and I just think that I just don't understand why they don't have the same rights as us. I mean, obviously they can have civil partnerships but it's not at all the same, so mm. I just want them to be able to get married just like I did. Mm. Right, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Because like I said, I can get married as many times as I want but they can only get married not at all. Yeah. yeah, which I think is ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's true. You know. Um, how many times would you like to get married? Brian? I don't know. Well, I'm only second. <laughs> I'm only second for now. So we'll see. It, it would look bad if you go to a third. You know, I'm bad. fond of a wedding, so we'll see. You, know, <laughs> yeah. you never know. Okay, let's talk about stepping out for a second. We saw a clip at the beginning uh, of the of the interview, and you're in that. How, how are you finding it? Is, is, is it? is it a tough grind? Or are you enjoying the experience? It's great fun, but it is a lot of tough work. I mean, it's every day. It, we haven't really had a day off for six weeks, so it is definitely yeah. tough. But it's so much fun, especially you, doing it together. Are you, can you can you dance? I'm not being. Um, but we're going okay. You I, seem we're, to be. we're getting better as we go along. I think we're, the first couple of weeks was really hard because it's, you know, you're starting from the very beginning and you're learning all these basic steps of these dances you've never even heard of. Um, but as you go along, it just it seems to get a little easier, and you, you know we're we're taking it in quite quick. But it's, it, yeah. we haven't got that much time. Like you finish a show on Saturday night, and then you kind of start on the Monday. and You got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off. And then Thursday, and that's you got three days basically to learn a brand yeah. new dance. And part of the show seems to be that they follow you as a couple to see, uh, they, they mm. edit you and see if you're bickering or if you're kissing or whatever you're doing <laughs> at the time. And what's your, what's your thing, your image, as it were, on this? Um, I mean, they're just there the whole time. So obviously I've been caught snapping at Brian, but Brian can be really annoying sometimes. So I can't hold it in. <laughs> There's a few snaps this week and I'm really worried. <laughs> Why do you snap at him, mostly? Because um, he can be quite lazy, and then if I, I'm lazy for like a minute, he has a meltdown. But he can be lazy <laughs> for hours. Meltdown. You do. He I freaked don't. at me this week. Yeah, because you were, you were being unprofessional. For uh, the best of 30 seconds. Yeah, but that's a very important 30 seconds, Vogue. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel really bad about it. Now. Here's a headline from one of the papers. Stepping out is a blow to our sex life. Brian and Vogue are too tired to tango. Wow. So glad my mom's watching this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, is, is that a true story? 
No, it's not a true story, but it's sort of gross that you're even yeah. talking about it, bro. Yeah, having to correct that is kind of weird as well, because our parents <laughs> are watching. Well, we're virgins, so it's... That's yeah. true. So there's nothing, everything, everything else. Uh, where did that story come from, I wonder, then? Brian. Oh, somebody asked what me. What did you somebody, say? No, I didn't say anything. Somebody asked me, um, you know, was it again, are we having, is it a helping with our sex? And I just said, no, we're so tired from dancing all day. I shouldn't have said that, should I? No, no. Because, because that turns into... You think I know by now to keep my mouth shut, you in fairness, would you? You would think. <laughs> you would think. But uh, it, that, that intensity you're describing of learning to dance and then being mm. on TV and all that and doing stuff like this, is that, is it, uh, does it enhance the relationship? Does it, is it a strain for you guys? What, what's no, it's, definitely made, it's, it's made us closer, a lot closer, because, you know, besides the learning of the dancing, it's, it's, it is a competition too, and we're, we're both very competitive. And when you're going through a challenge like this, yeah. like it mightn't sound like a challenge, but it is. It's tough learning how to do these dances, and yeah. it's physically demanding. Um, and we've definitely grown closer from it. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you about Australia? Because you've had four number one hit singles in Australia, isn't that right? And mm -hmm. a platinum album, am I right in saying that? You had enormous success over there. Um, and yet I always get the feeling you have a sort of, uh, f sort of fractious, difficult relationship with, with Ireland in some mm -hmm. ways, and with, with some, say, the Irish media, the press, generally speaking, people yeah. like me. But um, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's a, the, the people... I don't know. It's, um, I'd probably, it's, it's weird that it's, it's Ireland, because Ireland's my home country, and I'm Irish, and, I, and I'm very patriotic Irish person, so I don't know why sometimes it's like that, but look, it's part and parcel of what we do, you know? If you're, if you're in the public eye, you've got you to gotta take it as it comes. I'm, to be honest, I'm so over now, I don't really care anymore. Are you? I come home now and I have fun, I see my family and friends, and I play golf, and I go to the pub, and I don't really care about anyone says anymore in the papers or anything. It's, it's just old news now. And do you feel... And I'm, you know, I'm 33 now, I'm getting old, and thank God now there's people like One Direction stuff so they can wreck their head for a while. <laughs> So I'm, I'm glad now just to get old gracefully and enjoy Ireland again. And would you like to get a number one in Ireland and, and be successful here as well as in Australia? You know, I just, love, I just love singing. It doesn't really... I think the days of worrying about getting number ones and, and the amount of records you sold are gone. Um, for me, it's just as long as I can do it forever, I'm happy. You yeah. know, as long as I can get up and sing. Um, I don't care if it's karaoke in a pub, I'll do it. I just love singing. Okay, well, yeah. you're going to sing for us tonight? I am, yeah. Well, why don't you make your way over there and I'll tell everyone what you're about to do. Brian McFadden heading over. Why don't you sit and watch, him? Oh, yeah. watch from here?